All right, Cody. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Nice to have you here, mate. I see you're out there. You're doing a few things. Yeah, hundred percent. Got a bit on the plate. <laughs> yeah, how's your how's your podcast going? Yeah, good. Got the five minutes with podcast. Um, just interview a bit of everything from sports stars to music to chefs. Yeah, bit of friends. Um, hear their backstory on life in five minutes. So you don't have to watch the full hour and a half. Um, but that, yeah, that's different, man. Yeah. For for a podcast. Like, you know, we run 45 minutes to an hour and a half. You do it in five. Yeah. Which, when I first seen it, it's actually pretty innovative. I haven't seen that before. A five-minute podcast, you're in and out. Yeah. And um, you sort of, and you actually keep that pace up. Yeah. I've noticed that with you. You push the information through yeah. to get as much through in five minutes. How did you how'd you come across that? Because your, your background, you're a, you're a PT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when the gyms closed down, being at home, I went from working like probably like I'd honestly say 70, 75 hours a week. Yep. And then going to like four hour we- weeks. <laughs> it's like, so I ended up starting the podcast. Just mm-hmm. was like, oh, what should I start? Five minutes, five minutes with. Yep. Straight forward. I had um, my first guest was a fellow PT from Plus Fitness, Georgia. Um, talked a bit about mental health and all that stuff. And then mm-hmm. had an all right kind of review. And then um, just started messaging people on Instagram, um, got through it. And now we're 45 episodes in. Um, it's been two months, wow. yeah. <laughs> so you've done 45 in two months? Yeah, my first month and a half, I posted one a day. So we had one episode a day. Wow. Um, and because it's five minutes, like the interview might take 15 and a half an hour. Cut it down. Um, editing's easy, like record a Zoom call, edit it, all that type of stuff. And then, yep. um, yeah, we just like kind of started. Once you get one person, you start to get a bit more and it just kind of follows through and like... It just keeps flowing through all the way. Yeah, yeah. So... You're saying that you so you're doing 70, 75 hours a week. Where, where was that at? Uh, plus fitness in Minto. So, uh, my business journey too. Yeah, plug there. <laughs> yeah, we well, give it a plug. Everyone does. Yeah, it's all right. Um, contracted inside the gym, um, working with face to face clients, group classes, all that type of stuff. Yeah, I'm uh, doing consults, programs, a lot of work. Like, obviously, it's probably not 75 hours working straight. Um, mm. I usually do like a 5 30 a.m. start to about midday ish, have about an hour and two break, and then go on to a night shift. And you um, work all the way through. Yeah, so Monday to Thursday, fit everyone in, then kind of quiet down on Friday, and Saturday's morning's a bit of a peak. Yeah. So so I'm assuming when you're saying you went from 75 to four hours, that was, was it COVID-related? Yeah, COVID-related. Um, when the gym shut, I obviously kept a few clients kind of face-to-face, but for the first three weeks, because of the restrictions and, like, mm-hmm. I didn't want to be that trainer that had a COVID outbreak within his clients. Yeah. Um, so I started an online platform. Online, um, straight away. Yeah, the night before we closed, I stayed up. Um, I, th- I think I found out at Sunday, 8 p.m. we found out. So it was mm-hmm. like late and then I stayed up until 5.30 and then went to work, did my last class, <laughs> a few last clients yep. at the yep. gym and then um, online platform, had um, strength classes, Zumba, Yoga, Pilates live on Zoom. They got home workouts sent to them daily really? um, and we grew to about 45 members, yeah. So how how did you put that together overnight? Because, <laughs> man, like... I know there's a lot of guys out there um, in the fitness space, and this is what COVID's done for a lot of people. Yeah, it sort of made a lot of businesses turn around and look at their daily operations pre-COVID, yeah. and then say, "Hold on, you know, we need an income, obviously. Yeah, what can we do? We go online." And I still know guys and girls out there now, three, four months later, still working on putting programs together to yeah. take online. <laughs> when now the gyms have reopened, well, temporarily, we yeah, don't know yeah. if they're going to close next yeah. week or not, but gyms have reopened. And these guys are still trying to put that together. So I guess in their hustle, like it's yeah. taking a long time. And like, you know, I'm involved with a few tech businesses. Yeah. Tech doesn't develop really quickly. It takes time. Yeah, 100% you were not. saying you got something put together overnight. Yeah. <laughs> what what did you put together? Like how do um, you... So what I did, I just thought, so at the moment all my PT clients are in a Facebook group anyway. So I'll, yep. Facebook I love. I think it's underrated. Um, had a Facebook group set it up. Um, mm-hmm. I called it Journey Two, beating coronavirus. Yeah, it's a bit yeah. of a fun twist to it. Yeah, um, cool. And then I honestly just was like, all right. I messaged all the clients in the morning and that night, and I had them whoever yeah. wants to jump on ten dollars a week. Um, you get the live classes. So I set out like a class schedule. I think it was at first it was Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday morning. Yep. Um, and Monday, so Tuesday night, Thursday night, Saturday morning, and Monday morning. Um, and I would just Set up Zoom, half an hour session. Yep. Face, I just honestly sat there, to be honest, and just told them what to do. Yeah, um, okay, yeah. And they worked out. And, like, it's funny. Like, look, some of my clients actually 
progressed more during the COVID break than they did at the gym. Well, comfort, you know, you're working from, yeah. like I said, training from home. The yeah. traveling's probably an issue for some of them. Well, yeah. So what sort of platform did you use? So you, you said you had a, a Facebook group. Yeah. So you just sent, what, like you just sent out a, a broadcast on your Facebook group saying, hey, we're doing this thing over the internet now. Well, yeah. Well, I didn't actually actually promote it until like two weeks later. Yep. So a lot of my PT clients switched over, people doing classes, mm -hmm. um, just messaging everyone that's on my kind of system. Yep. Um, and then, yes, I had this Facebook group using Zoom. And then two weeks later, I had a lady ask if I can run Zumba. And I was like, no, I can't run Zumba. So do you know Zumba? Um, no, 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 no. I don't <laughs> I run Zumba. Yeah, so yeah. I ended up contracting... Um, so you found someone out yeah, there who yeah, can four, do it. Four instructors and they ran Zumba Yoga Pilates for me over the week and so just added him in. And well, yeah, was it like a one-on-one -on -one Zoom or like an actual group Zoom thing? Yeah, so a group Zoom. So you had like oh, wow. me there or the instructor there, and then you had yeah. about maybe eight to twenty screens, and then you kind of run it. Cool. Um, and then I picked up a so I ran a, fa a Instagram ad, um, uh -huh. and I picked up a client from Melbourne actually, and we did one-on-one -on -one PT sessions for five days a week at. 6:45 a.m. and to be honest, that kept my schedule. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you just you that's it. You're on. So COVID hits Sunday night. You get the notice. Monday's your last day. Yeah. Essentially, by Tuesday morning, you found a way to keep some sort of business going. Yeah, yeah. Through Zoom and just a Facebook group. Yeah, hundred percent. It's simple. It's simple. It works. Yeah, very. Like I said, there's people out there now still trying to put together platforms on some solid tech to do yeah. this where. You found a way to distribute the content, and that's probably the most important thing. The actual content itself, yeah. you got that content out there just via Zoom. Yeah. And what, in terms of payment, it's just bank account, that yeah, type just of thing. Beep, yeah, just pay transfer, and that's yeah, it. some did up Done. front. So, but yeah, it was like easy as, and then it just grew kind of thing from because it was because mm -hmm. it was like something you just needed a laptop or a phone. Jump like, straight into it. Like getting people from like like Melbourne and Brisbane was like, I can promote to those areas because it so wasn't had, just Sydney. Yeah. So you had interstate people? Yeah, three from Melbourne and two from Brisbane. So two from Brisbane were doing my Zumba and then three yep. from, two from Melbourne. So I trained a mother and daughter mm -hmm. um, on Zoom for about 12 weeks. Oh, yep. a bit less. Yeah, 12, about 12 weeks, yeah. I actually still train um, one of the clients from Melbourne mm -hmm. twice a week in the morning. <laughs> we do a Zoom call Ooh. at the gym, yeah. <laughs> and... And I guess, obviously, pre-COVID, the face-to-face, -face, no interstate customers. Nah, no way. Nah. <laughs> Man, that's unreal. So I don't, like, Merrick, you're, like, we are just talking before we started the yeah. show. You're 19. Yeah. <laughs> How does a 19-year-old kid turn this around? Like, man, most 18, 19-year-old kids out there, you're just finishing school, I guess. Or yeah. When did you finish school? I uh, graduated 2018, so graduated at 17, and then I yep. uh, went straight into my PT course. Um, graduated and yeah. trained the workforce, but I was working in gyms for a while before that. So, man, you've only been out of school for like a year and a half. Yeah. Year and a half. You're, you're, you're out there, you're on your hustle journey. Yeah. And like, you know, 18, 19, your, your hustle experience is obviously a bit limited. Yeah. You know, like someone who's 30 or 40, even, I know people 50 years old, 60 years old, COVID comes around, man, and they actually just, they, they cracked. Yeah. You know, it's a lot to take in. Yeah, 100%. So, you know, you're a year into your building your, yourself up and your yeah. business, this thing hits... And yeah. straight away by the next morning, you've evolved your business. Yeah. Man, that's yeah. a skill set not, not a lot of people have, man. you gotta, you got to look yeah. at that for what it really is. Yeah, 100%. And you got it to, what, 45 customers? Yeah, about 45, yeah. Wow. So it was quite good. Like, obviously, if you do the math, $10 times 45, it's like an all right income. And it's, a, it's a wage, man. Yeah. It's a wage in a time when a lot of people got laid off and aren't even getting a wage. Well, yeah, exactly. And you then... Know? Paying the instructors, all that, obviously, at expense. But, yep. and then I opened up, after three weeks, I opened up the PT back again. So I had all them, mm -hmm. like a few face to face, we're doing it at the netball courts. Yep. Um, and then. And, 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 you're, and you're allowed to do that under, like you were allowed to do yeah, that under yeah. the COVID so laws. Yeah. At first, like you were allowed the whole time, but just taking that risk and, like, you don't want to risk your business known as the one that spread the, like the COVID, the COVID and all that. Yeah. So I kind of took a step away for about three weeks. And I actually, I think on that second week, I get bored at home. I'm never at home. So that's when I started the podcast. And, then and you've got five minutes with going now. Yeah. I think I smashed out 12 interviews in my first three days. <laughs> wow. And you just reaching out because you reached out to me. That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Reached out. Just, you reached out just hitting up everyone to yeah, come on the show, yeah. that type of thing. Had good responses. Some were just like, I had one guy come and, um, oh, you're not big enough yet. <laughs> nah, it doesn't so matter, man. you got to start yeah. somewhere, bro. Yeah, no, 100%. There's no such thing as not big enough. Yeah. You know, and generally, the guys who think about you in that way now, they're the guys who will reach out to you in four or five years and say, hey, can you give me a crack? <laughs> because they knock down too many opportunities. Like, yeah. you know, you're 19 years old, mm. you're out there, you, 
bro, you've you've actually got a lot of energy. Yeah. When we when we did our podcast together, yeah. bro, you were you were whipping me through the questions and it was crazy. Yeah. And I think since now you've had you've had Key on, you've had AJ yeah, yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Um, you yeah. sort of got that Sydney podcast scene. Yeah. There you go. You're not big enough, but you got everyone in Sydney on your show. Yeah. Well, Love Sydney. It works, man. Um, and yeah, and it's just talking like also a bit of networking side talking. Yep. And kind of feeding off everything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and fight like five minutes. People go like so. A few people said it's like really short. You got to kind of extend it. Man, I um, love it. Yeah, but I, I can honestly, I'll write down four questions. Yep. Um, and I'll just speed through them, I and I'll go straight deep. Like, um, do you, you know, do you like pineapple on your pizza? Yeah, that's you the, hit me with that one. That's the end of the question that everyone <laughs> answers. We're yeah. on um, yes twenty four and like eleven no. So that's kind of like the theme I wanted. Twenty four yes, eleven no. Yeah, yeah. So it does belong on a pizza. Well, oh, just according to everyone on the podcast, <laughs> bro. You need. I think you need pineapple on a pizza. Yeah. It works. I gotta be in the middle. <laughs> so you're in the middle. You're neutral. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right, man. So, bro, again, look, thanks for coming on the show. It's something that um, you know I like when young guys come on the show. Yeah. Um, well, guys and girls, but you know we yeah, haven't yeah. had a girl on yet. Yeah, we're working yeah. on it. I thought about that the other day. <laughs> yeah, no, we're working on it, man. We've got some girls that we're doing some stuff with. Yeah. Some really good stories coming on. Yeah. But man, I I keep coming back to this. 19 years old, <laughs> you survived. You survived and evolved through COVID, yeah, which is still going. But like, I think now things are stabilizing. Yeah, is that right for uh, you guys? It's been up and down. Like when the gyms opened up, there was a massive rush. Like yep. I think our gym itself would have signed up a hundred members in a week, which is huge for a plus fitness. A hundred um, members in a week, and it was wow. just because everyone's like, oh, like some aren't working, they need to mm-hmm. occupy their time. Gyms are open, let's get into it. Yep. Uh, but obviously, picked up a fair bit of PT clients, and then um, had a few drop off two weeks ago when it started to pick up. But then, yep. It's a business where the harder you work, the bigger the reward, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, like it's when you look at PTs and coaches, it like it looks like very simple. Mm. Um, like you just stand there, train people, help with the eating. Yep. There's a lot more to it, like in depth, um, and it's a stress. Yeah. And you, and you, what well, you tailor the program depending on what the person wants to achieve. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah. you get people from all walks. You could be putting on weight, losing weight, um, mm. strength, like. You, Joining the army, joining the police, like all that type of stuff, and you train for the role. Yeah, pro- programs are easy to like. It's it's so easy to give someone a program and say, "Go off do your program." But then that's kind of like where people are limited. Like mm-hmm. most of the PT clients, it's a lot of it's support too, yep. uh, physically and mentally. Like training people one on one, you're obviously training them, but you're also asking them questions about their kind of life. Because if you're if you've had a like, terrible day at work. Um, mm-hmm. you're probably going to eat not the best. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> you, true. It's generally what happens. Or like if you get less sleep, you're going to be starving the rest of the day. It normally happens. Is that true? Is that what happens? If you don't sleep? I heard that like yesterday. Yeah, If yeah. you don't sleep well, you yeah. wait, like you're hungry the whole ne- the next day. Yeah, so it's a bit of a hormone balance. Um, oh, wow. Imbalance, sorry. Um, leptin and ghrelin levels play up. And then mm-hmm. it's like those nights when you have like three hours sleep and you're starving. Because your body goes, I need, I need like energy. But yep. it doesn't really need it. It just needs sleep. Um, just need sleep. And sleep depriv... I don't know the word. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Like, lack of sleep is huge. Like, the amount of people you ask, like, how's your sleep? Yeah, good four hours. Yeah. Um, and that comes, like, the hustle side of things. People go, yeah, I'm hustling four hours. But as much as a, it's a hustle, like, it's also important to sleep. <laughs> well, it is, man, because what I find is, and I guess as you go through your hustle journey, you saw that come up, this comes up all the time. Yeah. You hustle. I find when you're younger, you hustle really, really hard. Yeah. But you're not getting a lot of punch per minute or per hour. Yeah. And then as you get older, just I guess it comes with a bit of experience. Um, your hustle gets to a point where you may not hustle as many hours, but every hour that you are hustling, you're yeah, punching yeah. harder. Yeah. And I guess that's what we all try to work to at the end of the well, day, yeah. right? You know, you want to, everyone wants to get to a point where you have a lot more free time, a lot more yeah. family time. But when you're younger, you make that sacrifice to really punch through. Yeah. And then, then that, so like just saying that it's actually funny during the COVID like before COVID I probably worked like I obviously worked 75 80 hours a week and That's it was just crazy, man. straight like just um like just hustle just trying to build a business yeah. um, my goal wasn't to make money it was just to build a foundation for my business and have a platform like people know me and like service all that type of stuff mm-hmm. um when COVID hit I was spending what like I was at home like I like, I was at home. <laughs> There's nothing to do. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and it was, like, weird because, like, I'm seeing my parents. I'm seeing my um, younger brother. And I was, like, I've never, like, I haven't, for probably the first six months of business, I probably was home, like, two nights a week maybe. Mm-hmm. I was staying at my partner's or, like, I'd come home for, like, 30 minutes during the day, quick change, go back to work. Yep. Um, and then it kind of slowed me down, let me, like, kind of 
think and reevaluate my business. And it, like it was actually, I tell people this: COVID was probably a bit of a blessing rather than. A lot of people are saying that. Yeah, I agree, hundred mm. percent. So it's changed everyone's perspective on a lot of things. Yeah, a lot more family time and yeah, family a bit more balance. Now. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of people don't want to give that up now. Yeah. You know, so look, nothing, there's nothing wrong with that, man. I encourage that. Yeah. But so, so you start there. So COVID comes around, and you go, okay. Well, was Journey Two around before COVID? Yeah. So Journey Two started. Um, so I finished my PT course in uh, March last year, and then mm-hmm. um, I, I just didn't couldn't think of any PT. I was just gonna name it like Cody's PT, yeah. um, and then I was I, I wanted a name that just came to me like while I was in the shower, like thinking of something overnight. Yep. Um, and then I was like, what kind of, what did I learn in my journey? And I was like, journey two. Um, the expert, people ask like journey two, what's that mean? Um, so what it means is like journey two, you, you're going to kind of fill out the next line. So say if your yeah. goal is weight loss, journey to weight loss. If yours is to, I don't know. Um, Whatever it is. Professional runner, yeah. So you kind of choose where your journey is. And I, that's what I teach all my clients about. Mm-hmm. Not so much about like say losing the weight. It's more like kind of what you learn in the process. And I learned that in my own process of things. So I thought I'd start a business. I like there, it, man. Yeah. It's a catchy name. Yeah, <laughs> it's a catchy name. It works. Yeah. So you got so your journey too, and then you've also got um, the the thing you do with the kids. <laughs> What's hard to pronounce. Elasticity kids. Um, a yeah. bit of a hard one to pronounce. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, I'm struggling with it. But so you got okay. So tell me about that, man, because I've got I've got two kids. Yeah. And that's interesting. Yeah. You know, because man, if there's something that I could love. My kid to have it around four o'clock every day. He's no energy left. Yeah. So if someone comes, someone like you comes around and burns through his energy by four, and I can put him down, I'm I'm pumped with that. So what's what's that about? Yeah. So um, when I finished my PT course, I was working in gyms, and then um, I've I've always had a passion. Of, like mm-hmm. so, my childhood involved um, like obesity. Like I was a big, I was like a chubby, chubby kid. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> like very chubby. I think I was weighing in at like probably like eighty five by year five and six. For real. Yeah. So I was wow. like. Probably you, I've, I've told my story on my Instagram a few times. Um, so I'll give you a bit of a background on it. So when I was a kid, I was kind of like a bit of a skinnier kid. I mm-hmm. uh, was born in Goulburn, actually. Born in Goulburn, didn't live there, but just born in Goulburn. Yeah, um, yeah. And then kind of moved to um, Western Sydney. And then um, what happened was, I was going to school, skinny kid. And then my parents split when I was 10. Yep. So when they split, it was like, Oh shit! That's um, that. Yeah, that that's yeah. Not, that's never easy to take in. Yeah, hundred percent not. And like, that's kind of taught me a lot of my lessons in life. And uh, at the time, you're kind of like, you're like you're kind of like unsure what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have like a bit of a, you kind of blame yourself for your parents' separation. Um, and then yeah. you look at that and you go like, oh, maybe like mum didn't love me because <laughs> yeah, I was being yeah. a little shit. <laughs> Can I swear yeah. on here? I don't know right, just be yourself, man. Be yourself. Um, and then yeah, and then that kind of. I think that honestly is where my proper hustle started. So uh, my dad moved, like they split, they, my dad moved out. Um, so did that Did that leave like you guys in a bit of a financial sort yeah, of? Yeah, 100%. So yeah. that's what, is that what sort of got you thinking about your hustle? Yeah, well, like it was more just like, I think, like I have an older brother, he's, he would have been like 12 or 13 at the time. And when you're at home and like your parents are both at work, you buy yourself, you buy yourself and your brother. So um, like, and obviously being a single parent is hard. I give big respect to every single 100%. parent out there. Um, and yeah, like I was eating, like we were obviously not in the best economic position at the time. Like I think I was having fish fingers and carrots for dinner. Um, I can't eat fish fingers anymore. No more, man. They're (laughs) they're scarred. Thanks mum for that. scarred from them now, man. (laughs) Um, but yeah, so kind of that field, um, that, and then obviously with the both parents working and trying to provide for themselves and for their family and all that, um, I stayed a lot at my, um, my nan's house. Um, and that's obviously like when you go to nan's, you get overfed and, that's where it kind of started. Like my uncles were living there at the time, working, they were young. They spend their money on food. So I would go to school, come back. Um, I'd be eating like probably five days a week consistently, probably like Hungry Jacks, KFC, fish oh, and wow. chips. like fast food. I think by year six, I could probably smash out like a double Whopper meal with an extra burger. <laughs> uh, and it wasn't even like, it wasn't force fed. It was just kind of like. That's your appetite at the time. Well, yeah, not. And plus like at first I was like, oh, I don't want to like, they just spent money on me. I don't want to, like money is a big thing. Like You don't want the food to go to waste. Yeah, you don't want the food to go away. So yeah. I'd eat it all. And then obviously the weight packed on. Yep. Um, so that kind of, the, the divorce kind of fueled the eating side. I think it was a bit of an escape. Like food was my. It was your way of dealing with yeah, it. 100%. Yeah, 100%. And like I was playing footy at the time. And I played footy since I was six. Um, so like if I didn't play footy, I'd probably be like a lot bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, year seven here, you kind of get um, a bit like kind of small self-conscious of your weight. 
Um, year eight, year nine hit, and then um, year eight, year eight, I went on a straight diet. Like I was tuna and salad. Um, I read a book. Uh, it's called Improvise, Adapt, Overcome by Paul De De um, yeah. I think That's his name. Um, Good book. Yeah, it's the first book yep. I've ever read in my life, besides yeah. Die of a Wimpy Kid, but that doesn't count. Um, so I read that book and that just changed, yep. like literally improvise, adapt, overcome. Mm -hmm. um, you started using their staff. Year nine, I moved schools. I was sick of my school I was at. Um, yep. The environment and part of the reason was the book. Um, and then I moved to uh, Patrician Brothers in Fairfield. Oh, you went there, did you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, finished wow. off year 10, 11, 12 there for footy. Yep. Um, that taught me a lot. That taught me a lot of the respect side and... Um, yeah, like a lot of different stuff. And footy, obviously, was a big part. Um, mm. My original goal was to crack the NRL. So in year nine, trained. Um, I hustled, not in the way of, like, business or work, more hustled in, like, fitness. Like, my – I think I wasn't making rep team, so I was like, all right, I need to hustle through this. Um, Let's work on your health and your fitness. Yeah, I was yep. up at 4 a.m. every morning doing sprints for an hour. Machine. Um, on a shot of coffee. Um, yep. And then I would practically eat, like, oats, like, really clean. Um and where and did you sort of get the program from, the, the eating program? Just, just made it up myself, yeah. Yeah, just came up with yourself. Um, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. Oats, oats in the morning and then tuna and salad for lunch, um, protein bar. And then I'd do weights at night um, and take like a ton of – I got a bit of a caffeine addiction from pre-workout. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I was probably on like four scoops, which if you don't know – That's, that's a like, lot of pre-workout. Yeah, <laughs> if you don't know pre-workout, that's probably so like – I think you, what, you drop like one before you, you do a session, don't you? Yeah, one. Yeah, and yeah, I was on yeah. four. And I was, it's because I was eating before the sessions like a protein bar and I just wasn't absorbing and I was getting – and then it, like it would even send me in shakes and I never realised. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that training was fueled to make these league teams and these rep teams, but a lot of it was fueled – like this inside aggression. I used to do this um, one thing when I trained. This was probably when I was like 15, 16. Yep. I used to think of like my parents' divorce, my – like everything that made me fired up yeah, and yeah, just yeah. use that in the gym. And I was like a 16-year-old lifting it. like – like probably like uh, dumbbell pressing like 40 kilos on each arm. Probably not the best form. <laughs> um, uh -huh. But yeah, like – But that, that's what you did. You took, you took the part of your life that really upset you, made yeah. you angry, and yeah. you used that as your fuel. Yeah, and hundred and and it kind of turned from mm. fuel, um, for the food like my addiction with food I guess came to like addicted with training. Yep. Uh, but eating habits were like it sounds really good like healthy and clean, but unhealthy in the way where like I would cut out all junk food. Probably like three years I I, I cut down like I cut down a lot. Cut down heaps. Um, and because I was sprinting in the morning, this was six days a week. Sprinting in the morning, weights at night. I was probably like burning off like a ton of muscle. Um, and then yeah, and then I started. At the time, I was all, well, I think it kind of hit when I started working at KFC when I was like 15. That was my mm -hmm. first job. Uh, shout out to KFC Bonnery. Yeah, yeah well, not, <laughs> bro, you always remember your first job. You always remember. Trust me, bro. Mine wasn't pretty, man. <laughs> my first job was packing onions. Packing so onions. Packing oh. onions, bro. So. I was a cook for the KFC. And yeah, um, yeah that taught me that I never want to be in fast food for the rest of my life. I think fast uh, food's, food's going to change big time, man. Yeah. Because people have just... People have smartened up so much with their food in the last five years. Yeah, 100%. You know, everyone now has got a meal plan yeah, or something yeah. along the lines of that that they're working on. Yeah. Um, man, it's good. It's good because yeah. fa fast food's done a lot of damage to a lot of people. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, don't get me wrong. You go in, you ask for it over the counter. They're not giving yeah. it out for free. But, <laughs> you know, the way they cook it, the way they do things, it's actually... Cheap too. It's cheap. Cheaper it's, than ever, and, yeah. And, and that's the thing too. I think the fact that it is so cheap because yeah. eating clean isn't cheap to do. Yeah. If you go out there and I guess like I guess you probably know how to now. Like I know a lot of people who pay twenty and twenty five dollars a meal every yeah. day to have yeah. that yeah, sort exactly. of thing meal yeah. prepped. Yeah, yeah. When you work that out, if you're on hundred and fifty bucks a day, yeah, you're spending half your wage every day on your food. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. That's not economically sound whatsoever. Yeah. You know, like I think if you sp if you're earning 150 bucks a day type thing, yeah, um, your food's got to be costing you no more than 25, 30 bucks for the whole oh, day. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it all like depends what like if you always talk like like as you said like it, people there is a big thing on um like eating clean is expensive too like that's another yeah. thing because like thing if you buy so like I know people I've had people come up to me that eat macas every day yeah. if you spend say like twenty bucks on macas a day mm -hmm. that's what one hundred and forty a week yep you could meal prep for your breakfast lunch and dinner with probably sixty bucks for the week so you're obviously you're not yeah. eating deluxe stuff but like if yeah. you I like if you have yogurt for breakfast. Yep. Lunch could be simple as like chicken, rice, spinach, whatever. Mm -hmm. Dinner can be the same thing, just with different meat and different part, like different yeah, rice different pasta. protein or something. Um, and like I think that's a big misconception. Like 
eating clean's not too bad. It's, it's just the mm-hmm. the blade, like the plain and bo- boring side of it. But you don't. But I think the I think the trick is you got to prepare it yourself. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah. See, that's yeah. the thing that everyone's paying. Like a lot of people are paying people to prepare yeah, yeah, it for. Yeah, that's when it gets expensive. That's where it gets <laughs> like that's where it's a killer. Yeah. You know, if you're doing it yourself, you're right. Like, how much can rice actually be? Like, rice yeah. is not an expensive thing to it's buy. It's all bulk based food. Like whole foods or bulk. Like you can buy it in bulk. It's when you buy yeah. those like. Those ten dollar meals, that's when it adds up when you're buying what thirty bucks a day on ten dollar meals. Like yep. um but eating clean, like when you're Bro, like, there you go. Yeah. There's business number four for you. So by the time you're twenty, you've got business number four ready. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Your meal plan business. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there's plenty of those around. In the well, yep. in the last two years, there's like so many muscle meal things. Like there is. There is like one in every gym has them now, every corner. It just doesn't look nice, but Oh, it depends where you go, man. Like, like you can, you have some companies where they just make what you would make at home: chicken, rice, yep. broccoli. That's what I use for examples. Yep. Uh, but you get ones that make like protein spaghetti, mm-hmm. and like, and honestly, if you're watching, <laughs> yeah. protein spaghetti is just more chicken breast. <laughs> okay, that's all. That's all it needs, really. Like a lot yep. of the foods, um, but those foods are going to cost the company a dollar to make, yeah, but you're much. you're paying ten dollars for it, <laughs> um, and that's where yeah. it kind of like if you just put. Well, if you spend a hundred bucks, that's ten meals a week. Mm-hmm. Um, Fifty bucks is all you need. Like honestly, you could probably survive off rice and chicken. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> so it's <I> true. <laughs> no, it's good, man. Look, but look, look how you're thinking. You're only nineteen years old. Your head's well, in yeah. the right space, yeah. man. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, bro, man, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually freaking out because, <laughs> like I said, you just the way you move and what you know for yeah. your age is crazy. Like, man, you're gonna yeah. be a superstar. Yeah, one day. Eh? <laughs> no, you will, bro. You will because your head's in the right space. Yeah. So t- let's go back to this kids thing. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm yeah. trying to figure out a way to knock yeah. my kid out by four. <laughs> How do you do that? Um, yeah. So, but I'll get back to my story. I got so I get sidetracked a lot. No, no, it's <laughs> good. No, because your story um, your story is going to lead up to this kids thing. Yeah. So, kind of unhealthy child, and I always tell people like the person I am now is who I needed when I was 14 or 15. Someone that yep. told me you don't have to eat like this strict meal. You don't have to train twice a day and like mm-hmm. take caffeine or like fat burners or protein. Like you don't need that stuff. Because it's not. Is it? Is it actually? I can't imagine all this stuff being. Very good for the body. Nah, it goes through the um, kidneys. Yeah, yeah, it goes through the kidneys. Like processes through. Yep. Like think when you, it's like alcohol. Like it's it's the same thing. It goes through the kidneys, yep. um, through all that type of stuff, um, and like, it's good to an extent. But the the they're a business, so they market different ways. Like you might get like fat burners, for instance, the biggest ones. Yep. Um, so they're thermo, so they heat up your body, make you sweat. Yep. It doesn't really burn body fat. Like a calorie deficit burns body fat. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it's promoted as a fat band. And people buy it, they take it, they sweat a bit, they think they've lost weight. But and that just that just drops the water content in your yeah, body. Yeah, that just it? drops the water content. Which isn't good for you. Yeah. Well it's not, it's dehydrates you. Dehydrates you, yeah. <laughs> um, I oh. think that's the biggest misconception in everything yeah. that we do. Like you don't have to like you don't need these supplements. Like in the, it's the word supplements. It's not like an actual yeah, main yeah, source. That's exactly right. It's um, just the, it's not the it's for when you can't get it from the main source. Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, back to the story. Um, yep. Yeah, so kind of unhealthy kid, I guess. Um, and then got into footy, tried to make it. Honestly, I was, I think I, at the time I was like real like tunnel vision focused on just like improving, improving, improving. Yep. Um, and I think I had my goals mixed up. So I always wanted to make the NRL, crack the NRL, have that scene, play that live. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it was more like, uh, how do you explain it? It's, I think I just wanted a contract. Yeah, it sounds yeah. really weird, but I but just wanted a contract. That's all I wanted. So, did you see that as like when you get that contract, yeah. you've ticked the box? Yeah, they've ticked the box. That's and I didn't it. realize that until after I signed. Yeah. So, I did a um, bit of like team hopping, and then um, we've, I was playing under 23s at what, 16, so I was quite yeah. young with the older boys. And then the year after, which was the year I graduated, so I signed with Cabramatta on a one year deal, mm-hmm. um, playing the City Shield. And then I did the whole preseason, the hardest part, and pulled out the week before. Why is that? Coaches weren't out? happy. <laughs> oh, they weren't happy with what you were doing. <laughs> no, no, they, look, they weren't happy that I did that. Oh, that you did that. Okay. Just, I just felt like mentally I wasn't there. Like I j- just finished my PT course too, so coming mm-hmm. up to that, I yep. wanted to focus on that, and I just felt like mentally, like the game wasn't my thing anymore. It was kind of like mm. it's it's a the game teaches you a lot, teaches you the grit, the mental side, the physical side. But yep. I think there's more to the game after that. Like like right now. Um, like I'm not overly successful, but I'm. I would see a bit of a success. Bro, coming. look, I, I just I think that depends on how you measure success. Oh well, yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> so for me, I'm looking from the outside yeah. in, and I'm seeing a 19 year old kid out there who's, you know, um, adapted through yeah. the biggest pandemic we've had in the last yeah. hundred years overnight. Yeah. You know, you've got the 
two or three versions of your business up and running to target different markets. Yeah. Which I don't know if you realize it yet. In terms of business, that's actually a very rare skill set. Because <laughs> yeah. what you've been able to do is yeah. take the same resource yeah. and adapt it and rebrand it to three different markets. Well, yeah, yeah. you know where <laughs> it's actually that's actually a very you don't learn that skill set till a little bit later in life. Oh well, yeah, you know. Well, so you've got that. You man, you figured that out at nineteen where you've got your PT training and your knowledge. Yeah, you've come up with a program for kids. You've come yeah. up with an online program which actually yeah. went interstate. Yeah, yeah. Which for a lot of businesses, picking up interstate clients is a massive milestone. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you've and you still got your PTing in your local area. Well, yeah. Ha- like, <laughs> how many how many se- how many sessions are you doing a week? <laughs> oh, about fifty to sixty. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. So, um, yeah. so if you're doing an, if you're doing an eight hour workday, like you're turning over a customer an hour. PT. Yeah. So I, I don't actually I tell people this all the time. Um, some PTs go against me with this, but an hour is way too long for me to um, train someone. I just I, I get distracted easy. Um, yep. So I usually train people half an hour. So I fit yep. two into one hour. So if I work, say, an eight-hour day, that's, what, 16 sessions. Yep. Um, and obviously it's not – like I might have that morning rush where it's back-to-back. If you're a PT, you know, nobody re- – like it's hard to kind of get those clients between 12 and 2. You might get a rare kind of uni student. Um, but I'm still working on growing that. Um, and then you get your nighttime rush, which is nighttime peak is yep. crazy. Um, and you'll fit, like, say, four hours in the morning, four in the night – and then kind of fit it around the week, but yeah. Yep. But like, I think an hour with the PT is a lot of time. Well, it is. I usually say 30 to 45. An hour is only if you're like specifically, like if it's a rehab client or if it's something specifically and you want that, like if you're doing a high strength, like powerlifting or something like that, we need the actual rest time. Yep. But like if your goal is general, you can get a good muscle building um, or like weight loss kind of session in 30 minutes easy. Okay. We've talking. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Because, like, really, you want your PT to come in, help you where you're stuck, and yeah. what you you know teach you what you don't know essentially. Yeah. yeah. And then off the back of that, you know, you build up the confidence and the you know the skill set and experience yeah. to have the PT maybe you know just supervise and sort of you know yeah. give you that I guess that second hand when you need it. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, I think if a PT is taking an hour of your time, like that's yeah. where you're milking it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. You might know? be milking a whole conversation. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think. But yeah. Um, what was it back to? There's a school, all that stuff, trying to make league. Uh, went that far, did my PT course. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, so what I did, I was working at, um, so I worked at KFC till I was about 16 and a half. And yep. then I worked about, I actually just turned 16 because I just got my license, my L's. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, no, I got my L's in KFC. So I worked there just before I turned 17. Yep. I got a um, job at Crunch Fitness in Liverpool. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, like, like at year 10, I wanted to be a plumber. It was only till year mm. 11 I kind of made the decision I want to get in the fitness and that was from working at the gym. Yep. Did sales assistant. Um, coming from a cook, I was probably the most like least confident person ever yep. um, and I killed sales. I don't know what happened. Like my, my PT is a bit of sales work um, but sales was just like something I've never done before and I loved it. I just loved not even selling. I loved signing people up to the gym and mm-hmm. my first month there, um, I think I, I would have clocked like 30, 40 sales in the month. Really? Which for the first month is all right, and then kind of led on. I was the, okay, yeah. I was the go-to there, um, and then a, a lot of people didn't actually know I was seventeen at the time working there, because yep. um, all my coworkers were like 23, 24, 22 uni students, late uni, yep. um, and then they found them age. They're like shocked. People still, <laughs> still people still think I'm twenty five. <laughs> yeah, bro, you, um, you, don't, you don't come across the being nineteen, man. <laughs> um, and then I worked there for about a year and a half, two years, and then I, I, I personally think I could have made it all the way to management. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of was in that role where I was like meeting this, like the bosses, and the bosses liked me. Everyone, like I was, a, I'm a hard worker. That's my probably my one of my benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they loved it. They loved that I was killing sales, cleaning, all that type of stuff. Customer service was on point. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it came to a point where I did my PT course, and I was like, all right, like I don't really want to do this for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, I reckon if I stayed, I could have probably settled for management, but like it's another stress in itself. And then I did my PT, started at a bit of a local gym. Um, in my house, I won't say too much about him. Uh, yeah. No, no, yeah, <laughs> um, keep, keep that, keep that to yourself. Yeah, and just I think having so much trainers there it was just cl- like it was just too clouded and like a bit of kind of too much going on. Yeah, too much going on. I won't say much. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> um, and then I during that time, like two months before, I had the opportunity to work for a company called Motivate Sports. They were actually mm. on the um, news yesterday. So what, what are they? They're um, um, so it's it's a hybrid sports company with kids. So I still work for them in school holidays. Yeah, um, and. There's different franchises like Hills, MacArthur. I work for the MacArthur one. Yep. Um, and that's when I met um, Ben Vengoa. 
<laughs> little plug there. Um, yeah. And we met there, and then I obviously started coaching school holiday work for his kids. Um, mm. And we, our camp has grown. So we originally, our first camp was 80 kids. Now we're up to about, we just booked out in 24 hours, 200 kids. Come on. Um, and that's a three-day camp, and they, like, that's kind of an employee-based thing. I just work from there, help them out. Honestly, it's working with kids from K to 6, so you're going to get a bit of a mix, and that's... So I can't send my, my two-year-old there for you guys to just not yet. Four burn more, him out. Four more years. <laughs> okay. right. um, and that, that kind of built a relationship with Ben. Um, and, like, Ben, I owe probably, like, a lot to, like, um, he, t- he actually owns the gym I work at, Plus Fitness. Nice. Um, so he has multiple businesses, and he... I was looking to get out of that Green Valley gym, um, mm-hmm. and then... I was like, you know what, I, my first ever gym I joined was Plus Fitness. Um, yep. So I was like, I want to get in that branch. Messaged a few locals and I was like, my owner of the <laughs> kids' birthday owns a Plus Fitness. So I messaged him. He's like, I was actually about to put an ad out next week. Looking um, for a trainer. Looking, looking for, for a, a trainer, yeah. yeah. So we um, did a bit of, con- like I signed on, um, contracted my business in. Mm-hmm. Um, that was probably the biggest thing. Like I got to contract my business and promote my journey too rather than promoting the old gym I worked at. Like there wasn't, yep. I couldn't brand this much. Um, at the time I was still, I'm still at Crunch. Um, doing group classes, yep. um, and that was what they pay a dollar. Like group fitness is underrated job. <laughs> um, yep. You literally stand there too, and you get like a dollar per minute. So sixty minute class is sixty bucks. 60 like bucks. it's it's quite well. Um, and I was doing that at the time. Yep. Um, so I started at Plus Fitness. Um, this is where my burnt out stage started probably because um, I was just growing. Like I went from. So what you mean? Like you just personally burnt out? Personally, uh, the next five months was probably the most intense um, working. I worked. Um, Probably five jobs at one time. Um, so I was working at Plus Fitness. Um, I got a job at a company called Live for Life Disability Services. So what I yep. what I did was I personally trained for people with disabilities. I love um, that man. That's mad. Yeah, and this this is probably one of the biggest learning because they they actually like they, they really enjoy it. They enjoy 100%. that time together. Biggest yeah. learning curve I've ever had in my life. Shout out to um, Kylie and Kelly for hiring me. Uh, I went there. I was an eighteen year old, no experience in this field. Mm-hmm. Um, I literally saw the job online. I was like, you know what? Like, I wasn't planning to go into this. Oh, I want to see this job. Looks good. Yep. Looks very good. Um, I emailed them. I called them. I messaged them. I messaged them on Facebook, Instagram, everything to get this job. Yep. Um, they liked it. I did that. Just chased it. Yeah, <laughs> I chased it. Yeah. People love it. People love when you show that you're hungry. Yeah, hundred percent. And then no one's hungry anymore. Well, yeah. <laughs> I find that like I find that a lot of people just you know they'll send an email and they'll wait. Yeah. You know they, when I find like. I, I pay more attention to the person who bangs down my door. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know? And, that, and that, that, that kind of sparked where my first day on the job, honest, I've, I've never really been exposed to disability stuff. If you, It's very different. Like, it's very different yeah, hands-on. It's an eye-opener. Yeah, it's an eye-opener, 100%. And my first day there, um, I was a trainer. I've trained people. Um, it, and they liked that I worked with kids. That was probably the biggest thing because it's yeah. very similar in patience levels. Yeah, it is, um, yeah. First day in the gym, I'm working with people with disabilities. I probably smash out three or four clients. Um, had about probably total like 15 to 20 clients there yep. um, and that was kind of like contract but employee based like that obviously it's not like they would charge the NDIS yep. um, and then I was working with all like dementia, Down syndrome, schizophrenia, uh, like kind of mental, dis- like mental health. Did that, did that have any effect on you? Like you sort of go home and think about it and... Yeah, yeah, no, like at first it was a bit like it's, con- it's some of it's confronting but then I got probably a week into it, I adapt pretty well to stuff. Um, and I was like, you know what, like these people, like they're normal people. They like it, that's yeah, the way are. you look at them. And I think a lot of people look at it like what they can't do. Like say if they've got cerebral palsy in their right arm, they can't do this, they can't do that. But Bro, if they look, can, they can do so much more. I was going to say, areas. yeah. And they'll go, yeah. what can they do? What can they I've, do with I've their got, legs? Yeah. I've got a family member who, um, man, does jigsaw puzzles back to front, yeah. no picture. Yeah, and, yeah. She, and she knocks them out in yeah, a couple yeah. of days. And that's a thousand piece puzzle <laughs> that yeah. will take a normal, <laughs> like they'll take an adult, um, you know. A good, yeah, yeah. A good week to work 100%, through. Yeah. She just smacks these things out in a few days. Yeah. They're, so, they're gifted in so many other ways. Yeah, 100%. And that's that's what people don't realise. And I did that for yep. probably six months. So I worked there six months uh, while I was building up my Plus Fitness business. So what I was mm-hmm. doing, I was at Live for Life, Plus Fitness at the same time, building up in both um, sections. Um, I was still at Crunch doing classes um, yep. two days a week and covering if like any, and that was Crunch Fitness, Liverpool, Oxford Park, Parramatta, Bankstown, wherever they needed me. Yep. Um, and then I was obviously doing my own kind of um, like outside stuff, outdoor PT. Mm-hmm. Um, I was working with the kids in the holidays. Um, and then I was, for about three weeks, I was still in the crossover stage of that other gym. So I was working that time yep. for a bit, um, dropped the gym and then 
Um, I feel like I picked up another job. What did I pick up? I picked up a quite And it would not surprise <laughs> me, man. You're, you've been all over the place. Um, but yeah, and then, and then I kind of, it was good at the disability place. The reason I left was to grow the kids' stuff, and I'll go through that in a second. Um, but the eye opener was insane. Like, mm-hmm. and with the NDIS, like the NDIS is obviously there to support them. And it's a good system. Yeah, there's so many learning parts. Like, like dementia was a huge one. That one was a real eye opener. Yeah. Like, yeah. dementia is like, like a serious, like they forget and it's like you yeah. teach them a movement the next day. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. but you know what though? It was actually like a real happy time because it was not only rewarding, it, but it is. It's actually very rewarding. Yeah, but, it is. But look, I found like with me more importantly, I actually find that I'm a lot happier around this particular family well, member yeah. because they're actually they make me laugh and they've yeah. got the, you know they've got the, they've got they've got their own yeah. sort of personalities yeah. and jokes and hundred percent. You know, so it's look. I guess for a lot of people who haven't, and for me. I was actually oblivious to you know um, to all that yeah. until you know this family member and when you saw that come from the out I, I call it the outside when yeah, you come yeah, from the outside yeah. you haven't lived with anyone worked with anyone like that it is an eye opener it's yeah. a shock but then once you're in it's so hard to leave like, yeah hundred percent like if, if I'm having a stressful day that's my first stop yeah, yeah, yeah. I go straight past there have a laugh and yeah. sort of go home and, and that's that's ideally what it is and then when I left it was a bit more it wasn't so much like I, I loved working there trust me. Uh, but then, because I was working with the kids stuff, I was like, all right, so I'm working kindergarten year six, like, I'm loving this job. I'm, I'm like, this yeah. was school holiday work, so you might do three days, you might do six days during school holidays. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I was like, you know what, like, I'll, I've always wanted, like, my initial goal as a trainer, I was like, I want to work with two to six-year-olds and teach them the fundamentals yeah. of, like, fitness and nutrition through fun games. So yep. I was like, you know what, this kid stuff, I'm quite good at it. Like, I just make kids laugh, happy at the end of the day, make them tired, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, send them to the parents. Makes the parents happy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, all right, what can I do? So originally I was like, all right, let's put Journey 2 into child cares. So what are we going to do then? I was like, I don't know, it doesn't have a ring to it. So I was like, I want these kids to be able to adapt to everything they do mm-hmm. and kind of bounce back from any obstacles. So I was like, elastic, Elasticity, it's a bit of a hard name to say. Not um, Won't be in a few years, everyone will know it. <laughs> um, that's, that's the plan, bro. That's what you'll do. You'll do um, it. You'll and do yeah, it. and then we, I started that in January this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the time, I was still at the disability place, but then that's one of the reasons I left. So I left there to pursue the childcare stuff during the hours. Um, I did a bit of work at Eldersley Spring Farm El- Early Learning Centre. Um, and then did about a month, like probably like four sessions over that time. Um, and they have 180 kids a day. So we probably, I probably, so I honestly didn't make a cent from this business because I was like, you know what, for the first 12 months, let's just run free after school stuff. Let's run free childcare stuff, get the name out there, build the actual business. Yep. Um, I didn't need the income. Um, I was like, I just want to build this name and everyone to know Elasticity Kids is that program that goes into childcare. Um, started it for the month and then mm-hmm. um, did like, it was 120 kids I had to sign on. So then yeah. it was five, you can only take 20. So five groups or six groups, sorry, of 20. Um, and that was the first ones I had the older ones, which was three, four, five. Uh, oh, sorry, four, five. Yep. And they were like breeze. And then two to three was a learning curve. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because with two to three year olds, like probably like maybe you could get them for a minute and then they're off in their own world. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, 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 but honestly, the four to f- so I have a make like do like obstacle courses and like yep. star jumps, squats, like all the basic stuff. Um, and then at the end we have like a bit of a story time, and then we talk about like like fruit, vegetables, broccoli, all that type of stuff. I've been and, you, and you came up with this yourself. Yeah, yeah. Just Unreal, <laughs> in my spare time. <laughs> Unreal, man. Like I, honestly, man, that's you got, you've come like again. You've taken an industry which a lot of people would think is saturated. Yeah. The PT and fitness industry. Yeah. And you found these niches well, and you're yeah. making them work. Well, yeah. Well, like on a, a kids is a niche. This a lot of people stay away from. Like a lot of trainers stay away from this industry because yeah. it's not easy. Like no, it's it's, not. it looks easy and you make kids laugh, but like. If there's a, if there's sometimes like especially with the two to three year olds, there's nineteen kids there. Oh, yep. sorry, twenty kids. Nineteen are like having a ball. Yep. They're like laughing. That you're doing stupid stuff. There's one kid like kind of either crying or in their own world, and, th- and that's just kind of what you get with the job. Yeah. Um. Yep. And it is disheartening when you see that because they're not getting involved. But everyone's different. Um. But yeah, no, I had a kids going crazy. They were like loving the workouts. I had music pumping. I gave them more. So we got. I call it the Elasticity Kids Legend. So after the session, mm-hmm. uh, we give them a sticker each. Legend, nice. they go home, all that type of stuff. Um, and then we built up nice. a bit of a kind of, I was building the foundation for the first month. Then I planned for the next 12 months to do, so I'm based in the MacArthur area. I, I just love the area for work and everything. Yep. Um, so much families there too. So I planned 
Yeah, a lot of, a lot of young families there. Very, a lot of young. And I plan 12 sessions, so one every month. So one at Minto, one at Oran Park, one at Harrington Grove, uh, mm-hmm. Harrington Park, I think, one of them. Um, yeah, and then obviously COVID hit. And then I was like, oh, lucky child, you can't be external going into these programs. You, you can't do all this stuff. Um, so I did a bit of background stuff. So during COVID, I actually made a Facebook group for them too. So I did, um, my mum gave me the idea because well, i got younger siblings. Yep. Um, we have, what, 130 members in that Facebook group. Non-paid, it's just free one. Literally, mm-hmm. I was just giving them parents recipes. Um, I'm, <laughs> it's yeah. funny. I've never done this before. I filmed myself working out like and doing like a, you know, like um, those like kids TV shows. Yeah, yeah. And they talk yeah. to the camera and interact. Like, let's get down and do some push-up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, but that's, but, that, but you don't, that's what I'm saying to you. You're, this is how you build a business. Well, yeah, exactly. You've got to give something away. 100%. Now, there has to be value. If there's yeah. no value, no one's tuning yeah. in. You know, and that and that's what you're doing. So you got this Facebook group for that. That's yeah. mad. I haven't done much with it lately, but it's kind of a platform yeah. there. And I had I probably did it for four weeks, and then I kind of slowed down a bit. Um, you need to do, you need to get up and running again. So I'll just get my kid watching that, <laughs> and you can burn him out. Yeah, might might be aired on set, like Channel Ten or something. Um, You'll get there, bro. You'll get there. <laughs> but yeah, so that's kind of um, what we're gonna work. I'm gonna work more into that when the restrictions ease a bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, being external, like it's not any parents, but like. The workers, you don't want them in there. Yeah, Risks have been yeah. sick, but I've just honestly, I've used this time to develop certain skills with working with kids. I yep. during COVID, I thought I'd um, found a good deal on Groupon, mm-hmm. so I bought my um, diploma in childcare and child psychology. Um, diploma in childcare. So you're you're running through that now. Uh, I haven't courses? started diploma in childcare. I just skipped straight through and we did the um, psychology. Look, I don't want the degree. I don't care about the degree. It's you more the, the knowledge. Learning. Yeah. Um, I did a child psychology degree, which is insane. It is insane, yeah. and, it, and it's actually taught me a lot about myself, about how, like, single events in my childhood have made me the person. Like, like say, I'm very independent, so from that age, I was like, like, I'm the type of guy that watches movies by himself, that I eat, go restaurants by myself, or yeah. that type of stuff. I have a partner, but, like, I, I enjoy being by myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that that came from, like, having, like, parents at work, brothers kind of in his own stuff too. Yeah. Like, we're just kind of getting, and I just kind of learned to live for myself, like, it's Enjoy way, my bro. presence, yeah. Well, that, that's who you are. That's who you are. <laughs> um, so you, so, you, so through the degree that you actually um, sort of been doing with child yeah, psychology, yeah, yeah. you actually went backwards and looked at your own childhood and seen certain yeah, events yeah, that 100%, made you. Yeah, wow. And it, and it wow. Show, like it just yeah, it's insane, and it still blows my mind. I'm still going through it, but it still blows my mind how everything links up to, like, no matter what yeah. you do in your life, even if you go see a psychologist, like mm-hmm. it all links back to your childhood because that's why I targeted two to five because between two to five is like your critical learning stages. If you learn. Like say for calories, for instance, not much people know what calories are. I see this 30, 40, 50 year olds comes to the gym and not know what like calories and protein are. No idea. I drop yeah. it in our, my aim with Elasticity Kids is from two to five, I drop the word calories. They're having fun. So something in their brain goes, all right. What's this calorie thing? Calorie thing. And it's linked with that fun event they had at, had at childcare. So the oh, fun no. event linked with calories. Then when they're, I don't know at school when they're learning like 10 years old, whatever, learn about calories and they clicks in their brain. Oh, at that time we did star jumps with Coach Cody. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's what I, that's my plan. Like obviously it's a long-term thing, but I'm, I'm just here to make an bro, impact. Bro, you're only 19, man. You've got, <laughs> you got plenty of time. Um, man, I'm just, honestly, bro, I'm really, <laughs> honestly, I'm, I'm really impressed with what you're doing. And, you know, we, I see a lot of people come and go um, through our business with a lot of ideas and maybe not yeah. the right energy or yeah. the right energy and not the right ideas. Honest truth, man, you're a very rare breed. You've yeah. got <laughs> plenty of energy. You've definitely got more energy than me. <laughs> You've got a heap of energy and man, the ideas that you're putting together and the ways that the way that you're actually sort of troubleshooting events yeah. as they come up um, is a very, very rare skill set for such a young guy doing what you're doing. I think yeah. you should be pretty impressed with where you're at, man. Yeah. And then and I, I'm seeing a bit more success now too. Like with the like obviously when you I tell this to anyone. Anyway, your first year, six months in business, you're not going to see anything. Like, you'll see a bit, but like, you don't see it. And obviously, until you look back and reflect. But also, mm. like, just the like, I think cause I've got a few awards lately. I'll go through them in a second. Um, yep. and like that type of stuff kind of goes like, all right, people actually like want to vote for me for these stuff, and I'm actually getting nominated for stuff. So I've seen that you got some local business awards and things like that. Yeah. Happening. So entered my PT business in um the Macarthur. Fitness service, so not PT, fitness services, which is yep. competing with all the gyms. The gyms. Um, and then I had over 175 votes. That's, um, that's that's big for a local thing. Yeah, and I was like, I don't even know that much people. Now. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it was just from like previous clients, new clients, and I, I was a finalist in the business award. 
uh, which yep. was, was supposed to be drawn a thing a while ago, but it's been postponed because COVID. Um, but like I'm looking at the other like no, nominees, and they're like I'm competing with like other plus fitnesses, and because mm-hmm. it's Journey Two that was put in, uh, yep. I'm competing with like gyms that have like a thousand members, um, mm. Fernwood, which is a big branch, like that yep. type of stuff, um, and then. Individually, I think, I think, I think, what you, I think what you missed in that all as well is you're competing with businesses that have probably borrowed or invested hundreds of thousands of dollars, yeah, to you know <laughs> get their business off the well, ground, yeah, yeah, you know. And again, you're 19 and you're running this business from your phone, yeah, my phone home, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and that's a, that's a big thing, like, and I like, I, I think I because, like, obviously, people see this business and they see the elasticity kids and they see the podcast, but like, before this. So I tried this. I actually tried to start a clothing range when I was sixteen. Yeah, everyone's um, tried that. Yeah, tried that yeah. It was literally, <laughs> honestly, I thought I was a genius. It was literally. So my name was Cody K O D Y. It was K O Y D, and it was just a logo there with jump. Yeah. I still have the jumpers. Isn't, isn't there a brand K O B E or something? Kobe. Or oh, something? there might be. There might but be I, <laughs> stole my idea. Uh, but I literally <laughs> have the jumper and the shirt at home. Shirt doesn't fit me. Jumper fits me. Yep. I wear it sometimes. Just was like. It's no brand. Like, I didn't have a – I just literally started Instagram page, had it. Yep. Honestly, I had no clue what I was doing. I ordered – because I worked at KFC, so I, was, I think, to be honest, I saved every single – like, I probably spent, like, 20 bucks a week out of that KFC. I worked Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I saved mm-hmm. every single cent. Uh, oh, pro- yeah, probably that's out what about you have to do. Four and a half grand saved in a year and a half. Uh, and then I borrowed a bit of – And like, that's off just, what, working weekends, was it? Weekends, sometimes during, yep. like, school holidays. Yep. Um, and then on – my PT course was six and a half grand. So I borrowed two grand off my uncle, paid him off in two months. But I, my KFC income saved for that PT course. Mm-hmm. And that was probably like one of my proudest achievements so far. Well, massive achievement. <laughs> um, and it was just from that kind of young age. And like, obviously my parents taught me a bit how to save. Now I'm a bit mm-hmm. different with money. I've saved, invest, all that stuff. stuff. Um, that's the next step, but after saving, start investing. But, well, yeah. you know, invest wisely. You know, that's what everyone needs mm. to do. And like, it was from... I think reading's very underrated. I always talk to AJ about reading. Uh, yeah, reading that, is that like, guy. That guy's crazy. Man. He's <laughs> on another level with reading. He is. Um, and yeah. I, I never like when I was a kid. Uh, so I got a bit of dyslexia. So when I read stuff, mumbles all over the place. Um, yep. Even my handwriting shocking. Um, and yep. I never read like I read Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I couldn't actually read and write till year three. Mm-hmm. So year three, I was in this um, class where they teach you how to read and write, and I was in like this extra stuff and couldn't read or write. Like school was not my thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I. Started, I read three books that Improvised Have to Overcome. Tony Robbins' book, which was huge. Which book was that? Uh, Unbreakable or Unshakable, one okay. of the, whatever yep, it's. Yep. Un, and that was like a money-based book and it taught you how to like bonds. I don't know even half the stuff that was in that book, but <laughs> I right. read it. Um, okay. Took some key words out of that. Um, See, I think the biggest misconception with books are you read it and then when you – you know, you hear that word again or you mm. see that situation again, you go back to the yeah, book. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So what people don't realise is mm. you don't buy a book to read it once and then shelf yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. It's on the shelf, so as you need to go back to it, you keep yeah. going back and you go back for, you know, 20 years, 30 yeah, years. 100%. Yeah. And when I tried to start the clothing range, at the same time I was – um, so I was, I was probably – I was studying um, Forex, foreign exchange, the yeah, currency yeah, stuff, yeah. and uh, I had a mock account – um, and I was in like a positive thing, like a mock account. When you, Where, where's all this come from? Like, are your are your parents sort of uh, like no, business just, orientated? And I honestly, I'm a big like I get a lot of ideas, mm-hmm. and there's certain ones where I go, All right, you know what? Like, let's try it. Um, yep. um, I'm gonna swear here, excuse the language, but I'm in a like a bit of a like fuck it attitude. Yeah. We're like fuck it, let's right. do it. Like, like let's 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 start a PT business. Let's let's start a kids business. Like. It started a podcast during COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then when I did the foreign exchange, like I tried it. I was like, you know what? Like, I don't want to sit at the computer and trade money. Like, I can't be bothered for that, to be honest. Yeah. It wasn't my thing. It's, um, too, it's too grounded. Yeah, the clothing company, I was like, yeah, no. Nah, like, I, had to, I didn't even know where to start. So, like, why not? I just don't want to do it. Um, and then, yeah, and then I had a bit of, like, kind of fitness just grew on me. Because I, I had that childhood stuff where I, like, I lost heaps of weight and I had that I had those like typical 16 year old fitness pages yep. uh, where they're like showing their muscles all this stuff like at first it was also to get into footy but also just to, like teenage boys impressed girls um, yeah, yeah. and then during that process which is why I talk big on the journey during the process I thought it was about getting to that weight getting to that um, goal mm. and impressing all these women <laughs> yep. um, and then it was but then I realized like this was self-development. Like, this was insane. Like, without this, I wouldn't be where I am today. Unbelievable. Um, and, the, and the process of it, everything, like, I learned was, like, insane. Like, I learned how to eat properly. I learned how to train. I learned, like, or sleep was a bit all over the place back then. Yeah. Um, and, like, it was just, yeah, I just, it, honestly, my childhood just went quick. Like, it was, like, mm. 
all that happened so quick because I was just in like tunnel vision. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and then I fell in love with the gym environment. Um, and that was a big thing. And then after my PT business, uh, after my, sorry, <coughs> no, it wasn't COVID. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, then PT business kind of started and all that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Mate, um, look, it's great, man. It's great. It's a great podcast with everything that you're sharing on it. Yeah, I know there's going to be a lot of people out there in uh, the fitness industry who's going to take you know a lot of learning from this. Yeah, you know, I think there's a lot that you've done. You've built a business um, with, you know, no disrespect, minimal savings. Yeah, well, yeah. And <laughs> for me, I take my hat off to that because yeah. I'm as, I'm as guilty as anyone else of spending a you know a lot of money to get a business out of the ground, and in the end of the day, the results are the same as someone yeah. like yourself. Yeah. Who's built a business from the ground up? Yeah. Um, off the savings that you have in hand. Yeah. And you're getting nominated for local business awards. Oh well, yeah. You know, against yeah. again against <laughs> gyms that have spent three four hundred grand getting out of the ground. So, yeah. man, I'm just gonna say, like, I'll take my hats off to you. I'm very, I'm very <laughs> impressed with what you've done. Um, we're definitely gonna have to do a follow up on this one here, Cody. <laughs> but man, thank you so much for coming on. Hundred percent. And good luck with it all. And I'm pretty sure, man, we're gonna see Journey Two yeah. with some of your other businesses. <laughs> You know, grow over the years, man. Yeah, yeah. Thanks 100%. for coming on, Katie. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. <laughs>